That learning check one for you here. What are the names of the two most common capillaries? We talked about this last week. Let's bring up a picture. If you couldn't get it, maybe this will help. The two most common types are continuous. That's over here where the cells are continuous, like right next to each other, tight junctions in between um, adjacent cells, tight junctions. And the other most common type is fenestrated. There are fenestrations or pores in between the adjacent cells. And you can see this down here. There's still, you know, there is some space in between each cell, um, but they're a lot tighter and there's not these holes, these pores, which are fenestrations. Um, the third type is the sinusoidal that we, we is even more holy, even more porous and doesn't have the full basement membrane. Um, that's not the most common. So these are all a single layer of endothelium. That's what you can see right here. Right here is endothelial cells, one layer of epithelial cells, endothelium. Let's, let's just say simple squamous. Why is that important? They are thin, um, they're, they're flat, they're one layer, so stuff can pass across them pretty easily. Um, the basement membrane is just an acellular matrix that kind of holds it all together. So we're gonna look at what can pass across these different types of capillaries, right? You can already probably imagine different stuff can pass across here and diff more or less easily than what can pass across here. You might already have some predictions in terms of like fenestrations, those pores are going to allow some larger molecules through. Um, remember one place that these are located is in like the anterior pituitary where we have that portal system where we have um, peptides. You want a large amount of peptide hormones that sometimes are pretty big. Um, CRH is a, it's not just nine amino acids, it's a pretty big protein actually folds. You need to have some space for that to be able to exit. So these capillaries fenestrated are more permeable than continuous. But let's look more carefully at the mechanisms by which things can pass through capillaries. So exchange across capillaries, Here's another image. Um, and so we're gonna be kind of looking generically at a capillary that might have some pores, but what are some other ways it can get across as well? Um, so what are ways that stuff that can get across a membrane, um, across this layer of cells? One is directly through the membrane. What's this called? This is um, passive diffusion, simple diffusion. So diffusion across the membrane. What can do this? Lipid soluble, hydrophobic, small molecules, right? You already know. So that's gonna be important for carbon dioxide, oxygen. Those are two things that can do that. Two, we can go through these intercellular clefts. That's right here. So these are the um, small spaces in between adjacent cells, even in continuous capillaries. So um, there's, there's some variability there. So these are present even in continuous capillaries. They're smaller than pores. They're not actually like pores. They're just clefts, right? You know what a cleft is, like a space, opposed to a hole. <laughs> so they're a little smaller than pores. The third way is going to be pores. What are these called? Also, fenestrations. These are not present in all capillaries, right? Not in continuous. And both pores and clefts are gonna allow bigger things through, things that can fit through there. So it does not have to be hydrophobic because it's not going through a plasma membrane, right? The fourth way is vesicles. So vesicular transport, endocytosis, exocytosis. 
I'm going to draw this for you in just a moment, what this looks like. But first, I want to note, this means so many things cannot use any of these methods. So red blood cells, big proteins, um, so those are going to stay inside the capillary. And that's going to be important. This plus proteins, that's going to contribute to our osmotic pressure inside the capillaries, which is super important. So I've drawn this piece for you. This is a zoom in of this side of the vessel here, um, just like this arrow indicates. So this would be the lumen of the capillary. And this would be like the extracellular fluid, specifically interstitial fluid, so in of the tissues. And these, what are these things? I'm gonna draw actually some nuclei here. These are the epithelial cells that make up the endothelium of the capillary. Altogether, they make up the um, endothelium. This I've tried to draw here, it's not great. This is a pore or fenestration. I'm trying to emphasize here that it's bigger and more like a hole rather than your intercellular cleft, which just means a cleft between cells, right? So this is number two in terms of what we, we just talked about. This is number three. Where's number one? That's just gonna be like this. Number one, right through the membrane, only certain things can do that. And then lastly, number four, we've got ves vessels, um, vesicles that can either go out of the cell or into the cell, endo and exocytosis. Um, so we're going to look a little bit at oxygen and carbon dioxide movement when we get to respiratory system, but this next video I'm about to start is gonna be actually on fluid movement. So H2O, a lot of it moves across the capillaries. It can move through all of these methods, um, but if you want, I get to move kind of quickly. Diffusion's not great. It doesn't move in vesicles. Um, so we're just gonna look at the, it basically, but it moves very quickly. So it does go through these clefts and it's based on pressure differences. So the, the drive for water is what we're gonna focus on. Um, this is gonna be important for refreshing the fluid in your tissues, um, each tissue that has capillary bed um, and also regulating blood pressure as well. Um, so again, we're going to be focused on not these methods. I want you to know these um, and be able to predict, right, like what molecule might use these different methods. But the next video, we're going to go to the pressures that allow for what's called bulk flow, which is the flow of bulk fluids, water across these cells.